today's theme all throughout, uh, actually today and yesterday, uh, through the conference is one of uh, transformation. I think we're seeing that with uh, the industry association, but also our industry. And uh, today's uh, keynote speaker is uh, uh, a perfect example of the right leadership within our communities and municipalities that can lead to extraordinary transformation at the local level. So on June 24th of 2015, a motion was put forward in Oxford County to become the first municipal government in Ontario to commit to 100% renewable energy by 2050. And this was passed by council. So uh, Trevor Birch, mayor, city of Woodstock and Oxford County councillor was the architect of the successful motion. Today he will describe how the council's commitment to this action brings great responsibility but also great opportunity and how the commitment to 100% renewable energy is not only the right path to take for our future and our children's future but also the right approach for their local economy, their ability to continue to attract investment in clean, sustainable, innovative technologies. He will also describe how each of us present here today can also play a role in delivering positive transformation in our own communities. Uh, Mayor Birch is passionate about the city of Woodstock and its future. His family has called Woodstock home for over six generations. The first homestead in Woodstock was a log cabin, actually, built by his fifth great-grandfather in the early 1800s. As mayor, Trevor's mission will be to engage the people of Woodstock and make them part of its future, create an open and transparent local government with high integrity, promote local business and the Woodstock brand. Trevor understands that economic health is important to our community's future and our children's and grandchildren's future. Trevor will work closely with local business and all stakeholders to create new opportunities, rejuvenate our economic foundations and together build and promote Woodstock around the world. I am very pleased, and please join me in welcoming Mayor Trevor Bush. Birch. Thank you very much. Well, thank you for the kind introduction and uh, the warm welcome. And I don't know if any of you feel like this in the room, but when I hear an introduction like that, it makes me sound a lot more important than I feel. Yes, I am Trevor Birch. I am the mayor to almost 40,000 residents of the city of Woodstock. We are located at the heart of Oxford County. It's about an hour and a half west of here. We are a mix of rural and urban and our major industry, automotive and agriculture. More, more important than the titles that I now hold uh, is, well, first I'll tell you the first time I heard my name with the titles a little more than a year ago, I was, I was kind of impressed. But more important, it's a fact. I am part of a team. I am one of 10 councillors at the County of Oxford who unanimously set the goal for 100% renewable energy by 2050. And this is for our entire county. This is not for the government. It's for everyone, the businesses and the people. We were the first municipality east of the Rocky Mountains to set this goal. But first, I need to share a little bit of my heart with you so that you can understand my vision and my ass of you today. And as you heard in the introduction, my fifth great-grandfather, he built the first house in Oxford County. And today, it is now our main street in the city of Woodstock. And when my family goes on a nature hike on a nearby farm, I can point to trees that were planted by my children's grandfather and great-grandfather. And then I can point to thousands of trees that I planted 25 years ago. And my children ask, how soon can we plant trees? I don't talk to my children about how we shouldn't cut trees down. I speak to my children in the positive. Can we plant more trees? And yes, we can. This year in the city of Woodstock, because of sharing a simple story about my family's passion for planting trees, we saw more volunteers than ever before come out on Arbor Day 
and plant more trees than we've ever had. And so what will next year be like and the year after as these stories grow and we can celebrate successes? During the election, my wife and three young children, they helped me campaign and they shared my heart with the community. They talked about the progress that's already been made by previous generations and celebrating those successes and how we need to continue to build on it for the next generation and the next generation. Speaking about my vision for generations, as each generation makes incredible advances, we need to celebrate every opportunity we can and look to that future and talk about grandchildren and great-grandchildren that haven't even been born yet. And no, I don't live in a log cabin like my fifth great-grandfather. I live in a very comfortable house. But I have now installed LED lighting. And my next car will be an EV vehicle. As many of you would have heard today, the province of Ontario released an amazing commitment to put $20 million of funding to new electronic vehicle charging stations across the province. The County of Oxford started embarking on a sustainability plan. And this started prior to my election in office. And it was driven by grassroots and the community. Individuals coming together to help shape and influence the leaders that are making the decisions for the community. That plan, Future Oxford, envisions a triple bottom line. What is good for the community? The quality of life of all the residents and visitors. What is good for the economy? And you can look up the Woodstock logo and what you will see is a sun rising over our community and our industry, surrounded by our agricultural heritage and our love of nature. And the third, what is good for the environment? Stewardship, as I already spoke about, planting trees for the future. More solar, more of this, more of that, more of the other things. There are so many pieces that need to come together for this change that we're all seeing taking place right now. Right now, we're coming up on Christmas season, and pretty soon it'll be New Year's. And I know that there's some people here today that are probably going to make another resolution. And years ago, I made a resolution to lose weight. And that first time that I had a little stumble and I stepped on the scale and it went the wrong way, went up instead of down, I was a failure. I no longer make resolutions. I set goals. I'm eating healthier. And yeah, I'm going to mess up this Christmas, but that's just a little stumble. And I get back up, and I'm still headed in the right direction, eating healthier most of the time. So as I mentioned, the county would soon be setting some amazing goals through the sustainability plan. And before that plan was even finished, energy was identified as one of the top priorities. Myself and the warden, we assembled a team. This team, an advisory group, we call it Smart Energy Oxford. And I invite you to take a look at the website, same name, www.smartenergyoxford.ca. And what you will see there is that we have included our local utilities, electric and gas. We've included leaders in transition and renewable energies, business leaders in our city. We have retired ministry officials, academics, advocates, bureaucrats, and even a few politicians. You see, I never want to be the smartest person in a room. I want to surround myself with experts like you that know how we can move forward. And many of our stories that are on that site will share that information about why they have that passion and why these individuals are taking time out of their busy schedule to help shape our future. There's a lot of smart people here in the room today, and I enjoyed meeting many of the exhibitors upstairs. And one of the ones I'll mention from the stage, WIRE. Did everyone have a chance to stop by and meet the women in renewable energy? 
If you did, I heard a couple claps. That's great. And if you haven't yet, I encourage you to do that. They're expanding all across Canada, and they have diverse backgrounds and can help with the advocacy. So, immediately after that inaugural meeting of Smart Energy Oxford, I traveled to Vancouver to the Renewable City Conference. I was sent there to gather information and bring back some helps so that we could progress on this plan for energy. I met Mayor Gregor of Vancouver, the first municipality in Canada to set a renewable energy goal. That was very exciting and very inspiring. I found many great helps and inspirational tools and stories to bring back and advocate with my team members and the entire community. And when we started to look at where we were at already and all of the great accomplishments that had taken place in the energy sector within our community, we knew that after we gather the baseline data that we would be able to set this goal and that it was achievable. We've already celebrated great successes that took place before I was even elected. Likewise, the city of Woodstock is in the process of completing a municipal energy plan right now. And it is utilizing that same approach with grassroots, bringing many different people from all the different sectors to the table in an advisory capacity, just like Smart Energy Oxford. And we're seeing great success there as well. And I want to make sure you understand this. Utilities can provide education and help for business and homeowners alike. You can find some great videos on YouTube from Woodstock Hydro. Punch that in, you'll see lots of great stuff there. So when you go back home, don't be afraid to talk to your utilities. You can collaborate, you can work together to make these great opportunities. And all it takes is sharing stories. I wave the provincial flag high and celebrate their initiatives. Ontario has made great advancements, as you heard yesterday from my friend Bob Delaney from the Ministry of Energy. Some provinces in Canada need some advocacy. So from here, who can go home and start encouraging their province to wave the flag high for renewable energy? With the federal government in Canada now, the world is taking notice and other leaders are watching what is going on right now in Paris. So I want you to wave the Canadian flag very high. And I know that some of the people that are here in attendance at CANSIA are from all over the world. They're here right now learning from us getting these stories, making the connections so they can go back home and make an imp impact. There's also others that are watching what we're doing on the internet. So wave the flags high. So where are we at right now? We set that goal, 100% renewable energy by 2050. And we've got some successes we've already started to celebrate since that date in June of last year. And please understand, I believe we need to celebrate success, not just the sector of solar, but all sectors and all technologies, as we will need diverse solutions to create our future. We need to celebrate, as the news might inspire someone in another city or on the other side of the world. Some of these successes might seem small, not worth mentioning it will be a big deal for someone else. A big event for Woodstock. We are the dairy capital of Canada. It's the outdoor farm show, home to more than 50,000 visitors. And this year, this fall, when they came in from all across Canada and other parts of the world, they were greeted at the main entrance by a renewable energy expo. It showed solar solutions, solar thermal solutions, geothermal, biogas, compressed gas, and many more. That has an impact. That creates a conversation. 
those connections that were made at the outdoor farm show, they will go all across the agriculture sector in Canada, maybe to your city, to your neighborhood, and they might be making calls to you about a solar project from the information they saw in Woodstock, Ontario. Another success, a local company, Fairmore Solutions, compressed natural gas and biofuels. They received provincial approval for the first transfer station in Ontario, a couple of miles down the road, on the highway, right near Woodstock. Another success. Our local library has a lot of knowledge to share, especially with young people. And you can even go in and get a watt meter to go home and check for phantom power. So as these children go home and find the phantom power, they can encourage their parents to share the savings off the electricity bill with them. That's a big success. Some <laughs> might think it's a small success, but what happens next? The conversation continues. LED lights get put in the house. The story gets shared more. One of the cars needs to be traded in. The next car is an electric vehicle. And now that story gets bigger everywhere they travel. The children talk about new windows for the home and other improvements that can be made to save energy and protect the environment. Parents listen and fix up that home another success. And then here's the part you're waiting for. They've had so much success, that's when the children say, what about putting solar on the rooftop? And the parents invest in solar on the rooftop. So imagine what can come from a child going to the library with their card and checking out a cool gadget to take home and look at how they use energy in their own family. We can inspire others. Our art gallery, another success. They hosted an exhibit on renewable energy. Lots of wonderful pictures on solar, electric vehicles, and other renewable energies. They even had university representation there where you could map your roof of your home and find out how much solar energy you would generate. You know what that does? It gets people talking in the coffee shops. It gets people talking in the arenas about energy. The press shows up, politicians show up, businesses show up, and so do families. Another success. Leaders will embrace what the people want. Some of our next steps, there's a lot more to go. We need to spend more time with our local builders so they can examine efficient ways to build new homes and incorporate things like solar on the roofs, or solar-powered lights in the new park that's being put in. How about district heating? We've got a lot of policy reviews coming up. Development charges when you build your new building. If you build it that it's energy efficient, I think we need to reward people with a special reduction in those charges. It's time to help encourage people to make the right choices. Again, share the stories and celebrate the success. Work with local agencies. Talk to the other organizations and harness their visions in parallel with yours. The school or police station installs solar on the roof. Call the press, call the politicians, have the companies there and bring the whole crew and celebrate another success. One of my neighboring mayors, they're building a new fire hall and their counselors agreed they didn't have enough money right now to put solar on the roof, but they designed it and built it as solar ready. And I'm here today with another ask. If any of you here have solar panels you wish to donate, we can celebrate a big new success story back in Oxford and my mayor colleague will be very happy. So contact me afterwards if you've got spare panels. In the south end of our county, we have the town of Tilsonburg. Anyone in the room know Stomp and Tom Connors? Tilsonburg, Tilsonburg, you'll have to Google it. Um, 
We have a Siemens factory in Tilsonburg that makes large wind turbines. Now, that's a good thing, lots of jobs. The first proposal for an install of large wind in our county was met with a lot of public opposition, even though we have a factory right there building these. The solution, an energy co-op where the community invested, the local people invested in that project and they shared the stories, they talked to the neighbors and they inspired and this spring it'll be built and there'll be an education facility there for everyone to learn about wind energy. Now I mentioned this to you, it's another success for us, for you. Can you look at a solar co-op where you're from to have local people invest into a large project? I think you can. And I know we will be doing that in Oxford County when it comes to solar. We will be engaging the local schools and other agencies to start a special multi-agency, multi-day event on renewable energy education. The impact will be incredible. These young children will be the next leaders. They will be the ones that will be advocating for you. They'll be talking to businesses. They'll be talking to their parents. They'll be working for you. Partnering with agencies and advocates and academics to help all levels of government, we will all reach our goal well before 2050. Technology gets better and better. And right now, you see that government leaders the world over are looking at the transition to renewable energy and a better future, a better environment. So right now, we are at that point in time where we need to amp it up a notch, get out there and encourage more people to embrace this. Working with various academics and researchers and different universities to create a one-stop shop for renewable energy research and a center of excellence will get us another step closer to the goal. One step at a time, each step celebrated, each step a story, each step a success. Hopefully it inspires you to go back home and create your own stories. By sharing the positives, don't focus on the negatives, because there's one thing that we all need. We need a lot more positive. So my last challenge to you is to be positive about the future. Another step closer to the goal, and hopefully I've helped encourage you to share my vision and advocate on behalf of the associations and the industry with your municipal governments, with your provincial governments, with the federal and the world over. One last thing, I'll put in a plug. On Monday, I have a haircut coming up. <laughs> I teach my children at home that we have special talents we can give back to our community, that we have time we can give back, go into a nursing home at Christmas and give a hug to someone who hasn't had one, or finances that we can give. And I've also taught them that I'm very busy as mayor and I'm working very hard for their future and even for their children that haven't been born yet. So I'm growing my hair for a cancer wig so that I can put a smile on a face of a stranger that has not become a friend yet. So to close on a positive note, thank you for your kindness and your patience with me. Thank you.